Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon and I am pumped that you're here. Today we're talking about colon and rectal cancer staging. Now we are building on the previous three videos where we talked about what colon cancer is. We talked about all the risk factors, familial syndromes. We talked about colon cancer screening. After today, you're gonna to realize why this is even more important. And then we talked about how to diagnose colon cancer and rectal cancer. So if you haven't checked out those videos, after you watch today, go back and review those. They're super high value. Now we're gonna be talking about colon and rectal cancer staging today, but understand that this is medical education. This is not medical advice. So if you have questions about your patients, if you have questions about yourself or a family or your loved ones, it's important you see your doctor, your medical professional. Let's get on to it. For a lot of cancers, we use the TNM staging system. Now, what does that mean? T stands for tumor, N stands for node, and M stands for metastasis. Okay, so with the T stage, how deep does that cancer penetrate into the colon or the rectal wall? Okay, now we talked about all those layers. We're going to go over those in a minute. With N, how many regional lymph nodes are involved? And with M, do we have distant metastases? Or in the case of colon and rectal cancer, do we have peritoneal carcinomatosis or peritoneal involvement? All right, now, if we get this together and we get our stage of cancer, what, how does that impact survival? Well, check this out. Of course, the goal of caring for any cancer patient is to get them to ring the bell. And getting somebody to ring that bell that they are cancer-free, it really depends on what the stage is at which their cancer is diagnosed, okay? So looking at colon cancer, if we are able to have just local disease, so we're just a T stage, there's no lymph nodes, no distant metastases, we can have over 90% survival. When we have regional disease or lymph nodes are involved, you can see that that survival drops down to just over 70%. And if we have distant metastases, so distant organs, in the case of colon or rectal cancer, that's often the liver or the lung or peritoneal involvement, peritoneal carcinomatosis, then that survival rate drops down to the teens. Overall, the survival for colon cancer is 63%, and this is looking at data from the SEER database, years 2012 to 2018. I'll put a reference for this in the description below. How about for rectal cancer? Well, for rectal cancer, we see a very similar pattern. If we're able to catch local disease, again, survival over 90%. If we have regional disease, lymph nodes are involved, then we have survival over 70%. And then again, if we have distant metastatic disease, survival is only in the teens. Now, overall, for rectal cancer, their survival is less than for colon cancer. If we combine everything, right at 63%. Now, I should mention that these are five-year survival rates for both colon and rectal cancer. Well, let's get into the staging. Okay, so TNM. Let's start with T. Now, in that very first video on colon cancer, what is it? We talked about the adenoma carcinoma sequence. And in that, we talked about all the layers of the colon and the rectum. Okay, so the mucosa, the muscularis mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis propria, and the serosa. And depending on how far that adenoma invaded or that cancer invaded, it was either benign, an adenoma, or a carcinoma in situ, or a cancer. And so right here, you can see that a carcinoma in situ invades maybe as far as the muscularis mucosa, but not into the submucosa, whereas a cancer, a T1 lesion, invades into the submucosa. 
So let's break down the T stage even further. So you can see here, if we're in the submucosa, now we're a T1 lesion. If we are through the submucosa and into the muscularis propria, we are a T2 lesion. If we are through the muscularis propria, then we are a T3 lesion. And if we go through the colon wall, to and through the serosa, we are a T4 lesion. Now, this will be important when we talk about staging. So stages one, two, three, and four, okay? And we're gonna talk about what each of those means in just a minute. So T4 can be confusing because we're gonna break this down into T4A or T4B. Now T4A, that just means that it's gone all the way through the colonic wall and through the serosa. Okay, the serosa is really the visceral peritoneum. So it's through that layer. Well, what's T4B? That means that you're directly invading another organ or another structure. So it could be directly invading the liver. It could be directly invading the abdominal sidewall. It could be directly invading the bladder. Okay, so think about all those organs that are right around the colon. Remember, the colon starts in the right lower quadrant. It goes all the way around the abdomen, ending down at the rectosigmoid junction, right at the pelvic brim. All right, let's switch over to N. Okay, that's nose. So there are thousands of lymph nodes in, our, in the body. There are hundreds of lymph nodes around the colon and the rectum. So are any of these lymph nodes involved? Now remember, if we have a cancer in the colon and that starts to spread, that's going to spread by being picked up in the lymphatics, go and travel to those lymph nodes, and then from those lymph nodes, they'll travel to other sites of the body for metastatic disease. Okay, so are any lymph nodes involved? And when we look at N staging, it can get a little complicated. Okay, but if you think about it, it's just the number of lymph nodes involved. So N0 means there are no lymph nodes involved. Well, how about N1? Well, N1 can be broken down into N1A, N1B, and N1C. N1A means that just one lymph node's involved. N1B means that there's two or three lymph nodes involved. Now, N1C means that there are no lymph nodes directly involved, but there are tumor deposits, which are in the subserosa or on the mesentery or other services. Now, N2 means that four or more lymph nodes are involved. And so if we look at N2A, that is four, five, or six lymph nodes involved. And then N2B is seven or more lymph nodes are involved. And again, whether it's T1234 or N12, that is going to determine what stage we're in. Okay, and so hang on, I'm gonna show you the whole staging system as we get to the end of the video. So now we get to M, and M is for distant metastases. So that cancer is now spread to other organs or other structures in the body. Now, the easy way to think about this is we have M0, so no distant metastases, okay? So that means we either have local or regional disease, all right, or M1, which means we have distant metastasis. Now, the M can also be broken down into A, B, and C. And just like the lymph nodes, when it comes to numbers, M1A means one distant organ's involved. B means that two or more distant organs are involved, so maybe lung and liver. And then M1C means that there are peritoneal metastases. So when we look in the peritoneal cavity, we might see these white kind of studded appearance in the peritoneal surface that is carcinomatosis or cancer on that peritoneal surface. So when we put all of this T and M together, no matter what each of those numbers are, we can now stage that patient. So stage one, stage two, stage three, or stage four. Well, how do we do that? Well, take a look at this chart and don't get intimidated. You don't have to memorize it. This is just something that you can refer to, but let's go through it. So stage zero, that would be the most ideal, right? That means somebody doesn't even have cancer. They just have perhaps a carcinoma in situ. 
N0, so no nodes, and M0, that would be no metastases, so that's stage zero. And so for stage one, that means we now have a cancer. And as you'll see, there are no regional disease, so no lymph nodes. There's no metastatic disease, so N0, M0. And it's either a T1 or a T2 lesion. So we have a cancer that's now invaded to the submucosa, T1, or into the muscularis propria, a T2. And that's our stage one colon cancer, stage one rectal cancer. Now here I should mention that this is the staging system for both colon and rectal cancer. And we, when we look at the T and M staging system, they are the same as well. So while the survival curves are different, for the five-year survival, as we talked about at the beginning, the TNM staging system is the same. Now, when we look at stage two, that means we have a more advanced local cancer. So here we either have a T3 lesion or a T4 lesion, but we're still N0, M0. So anything that's stage one or stage two is local disease. Now, when we get to stage three, whether it's stage 3A, stage 3B, or stage 3C, this means that we have some type of nodal involvement, okay? Now, we see that M is still zero, so we have no distant metastasis. And then finally, when we get to stage four, that, remember, is when our survival curve really drops off. Now, we have distant metastatic disease, and if it's M1A, that means that we have one organ involved. M1B is two or more organs. And then M1C is, of course, if we have peritoneal carcinomatosis. All right, so remember, you don't have to memorize this chart. This is something you can always refer to. The important thing is that you know and understand. So as the T and M criteria change, the stage changes. For stage one, we're local. For stage two, we're local. For stage three, we're regional. And for stage four, we are now distant and metastatic. And that's when that survival curve really drops off. So, of course, we want local disease. And that is really the importance of colon and rectal cancer screening. I can't say that enough.